So did you know that when you make sauerkraut, it actually takes out all the chemicals if you happen to have a head of cabbage that you got from your local grocery store that has chemicals, it's been grown in a way that has a lot of sprays on it. The art of fermentation actually takes out um, almost all of those chemicals. So it's a really neat process of what the natural art of fermentation does to the cabbage to break down all those chemicals so you don't even have to have them in your body. So a really great benefit to buying local is it's grown locally, which means that it's probably more nutrient dense because it's not having to grow somewhere else and then shipped and taken off the tree months in advance. You can grow it, you can go pick it up from the local gardener. This is 20 Acre Farms. We love visitors and can always use an extra hand. In this episode, we are talking all about shopping local produce and what makes the fermentation method so great. So if you are even curious about how to ferment foods, we have a basic apple kraut recipe above that you can check out. Um, and it really just makes it super simple in how you can take a head of cabbage and turn it into a really uh, nutrient dense uh, product that's really good for your gut. So make sure to check that out. Um, also, we really wanted to showcase a, a local gardener that is doing some amazing things. They produce so much vegetables out of their garden for a lot of local people. And while they don't do things um, exactly the way that we would prefer for our own liking, I still love that I can take their locally grown cabbage right here and turn it into a kraut, which then takes out like 99% of the chemicals that they chose to use. Um, they just do a basic fertilizer, I think, and then they might do that three times a year, and then they choose to till. I don't know what kind of sprays they put on throughout to kind of keep uh, bugs at bay, uh, but it doesn't really matter because what I'm using it for um, kind of takes all the guesswork out of it because it is naturally taking out all those chemicals, which is so amazing. These pepper plants are incredible. <laughs> yeah, aren't they? I mean, and they were, they were babies. When so do you buy them as plants or seeds? As plants. Okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah, he buys all his stuff as plants. Yeah. Goodness sakes. Look at that pepper. Looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and the Look at all the peppers. banana peppers. The plants are almost too Yeah, small. they're not, yeah, they're small enough they can't even hold the fruit. Look at that. So what do you do with the banana peppers? We put them in our salsa. Okay. Tomato juice. Yummy. Some people like, like we canned beans. Some people like really hot, hot beans. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then he puts those in there. Hot pickles, if anybody likes them. Yeah. So do you use a huge sprinkler then, or you no, do No, just that plant? little, um. Okay. That little sprinkler, like here. Okay, so here, oh, his onions are just oh, tremendous. Oh, they great. They're so just, you're putting <laughs> pearl, little tiny pearls in there? Oh no, they're, they're plants. He plants, he gets the, the onions come from gurneys in there. The okay, yep. Like little, they're just a bunch, mm -hmm. a bunch. Yes, you get a yes. bunch. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah, and they're huge. There's a really huge. <laughs> yeah, they look amazing. The so what do you do with all the really... onions? Oh, we Salsas use them and... in our canning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the beets, we can those, make borscht. Yep. With I love that. borscht. Yeah. What? Oh, the tomatoes in there. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes! Look at this, just a jungle of it's tomatoes. Just... So you do oh. seed beets or no? Yeah, just the little, little seeds. Little yeah. seeds. Yeah. And then his peas, he put up a fence this year. Yeah, I and love that, that idea. Worked, that worked really great because mm -hmm. they were always so hard to pick. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's and, nothing to hang on. And we did our first big picking and it looks like there's quite a few more on there. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Yeah, they look good for end of July. Can yeah. You believe it? I just hate shelling them things. Oh, like, so you do shell all of these? Uh-huh. Yeah. Look at how big that one is. Yeah, his onions, oh, he's got an absolutely fantastic onion crop. Yeah. You know, we use them all mostly in canning. Yep. So, um... We don't usually have many left. Those are marigolds. Oh, okay. We actually, we were yet. trying to plant the little ones that go underneath. Yeah. But these year, this year, we must have grabbed the wrong package. So we these the are um, not so, flowering yet? No, not flowering yet. Wow. They keep the bugs away. Yeah. It seems like they do. That's what I've heard. And last year, we had the just the perfect size. They were right on, would just grow right underneath those things. <laughs> this year, we must have grabbed the wrong <laughs> Well, one. they still look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send his cucumbers over there. Yeah. And we pick every other day for cucumbers. And how many quarts do you think you do in a summer? Oh, last year, we did over 500. Oh, man. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. Look at the head of this cabbage. I mean, it is ginormous. It looks 
super juicy. Um, we've already made three gallons of, um, of cabbage into sauerkraut, which is so amazing. We grabbed about eight or so heads and they're like eight pounds. They are big old heads of cabbage and they're delicious. They're so good. So it's really exciting to see what other local gardeners are do, uh, doing in the area. So that's really fun. So if you've been following us very long, you know that we love the Back to Eden style gardening method and we've been doing it for quite a few years. We have a lot of videos that we're starting to put out about that. Um, so today I wanna show you a local friend, a local gardener who started this method for the first time. And I wanna show you the type of uh, method that she uses for her covering and how um, all the benefits that she's noticed just in her first year. So it gives you hope that you can start no matter where you've come from in your gardening experience. So make sure to check out all the fun details. What I love about most about that gardening method is it's just simple. And I think you'll see it when you listen to her voice. This is like crazy easy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I love it because it's, it, to me, it's almost like lazy gardening. And if people knew how easy gardening was with this method, you know, the grocery stores are gonna lose their produce aisle <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's it really is that easy. Um, you know, the pictures that Bethany's taking today, I haven't been in my garden for two weeks. And look, it's still producing the weeds. There's hardly any weeds. And the vegetables are juicy and fresh. And I just, I just love it. It's just, you can leave it and, and yet still have a wonderful product when you come back. Mm -hmm. So what have you used for a mulch? So for mulch, um, I've used uh, grass clippings, straw, uh, pine needles. Um, I was able to get that at mom and dad's house out in the Black Hills. And um, horse, or not horse, uh, cow manure. Well, next year, um, obviously I'm gonna downsize some of the things and then add other things. Mm -hmm. Since this is my first year, I wasn't quite sure how to do all of this. But the other thing I've learned you know, listening to Paul and, and you, mm -hmm. is you can put things closer together and don't go by what the package says, mm -hmm. you know? And that also helps keep your weeds down too. Creates which is cover. Yeah, so. Which the cabbage shows that tremendously. Yeah, right? yeah, it really does. Like there's hardly any mulch under the cabbage or broccoli or kale. I mean, that's just from, from growing it a little closer together and letting, mm -hmm letting letting their growth take care of the weeds i guess right the kale and the broccoli is what i've been eating so far and the juices that are coming out of that is just amazing so were your other ones bitter and like dry do you think or what so the uh, the other kale i would say was drier i don't think it was bitter but it was to me it was much drier and same with the broccoli i don't remember the broccoli being as juicy as this is juicy yeah looks delicious thanks so much for watching we love um, interacting with you so make sure to leave a comment below um, if you've ever tried this style of gardening and what you've loved and some different tips that you've um, found successful in your area uh, we would love to learn from you guys as a community so thanks uh, so much and make sure to like and subscribe and we would love to have you follow along see ya nice head of cabbage yeah and it's like tight together too mm-hmm